Welcome to Untethered Homestead. This is Ray with another set of pictures on a house in East Alabama. This will be five videos in a series that I have. This porch is a true element of log construction. This portable sawmill has been used throughout the job, ripping the perimeter beams. It's come in very handy. This is a T35 wood miser mill. Um, it is also easy to hook up to the truck, pull out of the barn, put back into the barn, and we've used it for many aspects of this house to cut everything from stairs, extra siding. Stacked up in the back of this pile is a cedar for the porch post and the beams also that'll be ripped. The log cedar in front are for the handrails that'll be later on inside the house. This picker is an old piece of equipment, but pulling out these logs, no problem. These logs are nine to 10 foot long, 16 to 20 inches at the butt, uh, butt ends. Uh, this cedar is close to being solid red all the way through. This is be beautiful red aromatic cedar. It took time to split this cedar down the middle. After it was ripped, we power washed everything on the perimeter beams. Some had characteristic marks from the logging machines and we just left them right in there. It turned out to be very pretty looking. The top perimeter beam is split down the middle, as I said before. The corner beams carry a bell bottom that has to be shaped down to a smaller size that needs to be done first and foremost uh, before we get started. The corner beams are uh, 10 foot long and not the 8 foot 8 uh, because the corners are a little longer. These logs have been split and squared off and now have to be matched end for end. The two logs in the back have already have their 45 degree angles cut on them. We weighed all four corners first to make sure we had enough of the longer material to do the corners. You can see the bells here in front and we're going to start on them getting them sized down. The 16 inch skill saw comes in real handy for working on this uh, material. Uh, we also used an eight inch uh, grinder and a four and a half inch grinder with a chainsaw wheel. I snapped the blue chalk line down the middle of the log as we laid it flat, flat side up, and with a framing square, uh, we laid it on the blue chalk line, make a pencil mark, that'll be your square mark, and you can make a square or 45 degree cut from that center line that we snapped on the timber. Once they were sized for widths, the 45s were put on them, and they had to be made the same thickness as well. This is a gauge or a template uh, for thickness, the end is carved as close as we could uh, with a chainsaw and the rest was done with an 8 inch grinder with a 50 to 80 grit uh, grinding wheel on it. All the ends have to be the same thickness, 6 inches, because the posts are all cut at the same height, uh, 8 foot. So they all have to be the same thickness. We picked a corner and worked out from there, fastening the bottom into the deck with a 10 inch deck lock. Uh, they have a nut driver head on them that can easily be hidden with good hold down power. We tried to use deck locks through the whole uh, process of building in this building. Uh, they have tremendous holding power and uh, they really go in easier than a lag, galvanized lag. You can see the tops are even on the posts. The notches are have to be moved around a little bit because all the posts have irregular tops on them and we just kind of have to make them a little wider. Uh, the notches as to make them fit. The corner is secured and cross braced and secured to the house. That makes it secure for a starting point. It has to be a good starting point, secure, plumb, and level, and then we can get started on the rest of it. The whole building will be laid out from this corner. The top of all the split logs are laid out nine foot six from the wall to the chalk line that is snapped down the center mark all the way around the perimeter of the house on the flat side of the carrying timbers. All the rafters are cut to the same length or 412 pitch. The bird's mouth were modified to fit the difference in the width of the split cedar on top. The top of the deck consists of 2415 square foot of 1x6 rough cut boards tightly put together. The 2x6 rough sawn rafters were laid out 24 on center with an average 8 inch uh, overhang at the at the bottom edge. All the roof deck was still a little green and being on the roof we know it will get a little more shrinkage because of the sun and uh, a little more than normal so we covered it with 30 pound tar paper uh, which will slow down the shrinking a little bit 
and for two reasons we use it one is for the shrinking and once it's shrunk you can you can look up through the bottom and see the metal bottom side of the metal and we don't want to see that so we put tar paper on the roof part to go on last was the back that faced the walkout and the pond below the reason for that was the masons were still working out there and we wanted to stay out of their way allow them to keep working and to stay out of their way so we waited for the masons to be done extended uh, extend their masonry work above the roof line to get finished out and out of the way uh, so we can frame uh, our deck around it the rafters of 24 on center layout begins here unlike the lower deck we frame to the corner of the house and then after we frame to the corner of the house with the rafter we put our hip in and then our hip rafters went in after that laying out two foot on center the posts and beams are again secured to the house wall by with two by four and blocking um, this is 18 foot to the ground below so we really secured this this end uh, much better than the other end and of course there's more rafters uh, standing up against this end we framed out around the fireplace our roof will be used for putting the staging on for the plump for the masons to do the next state stage of their chimney so we'll go ahead and get the boards on and let them go ahead and set the scaffold and uh, finish the chimney up through each beam to post connection has a 10 inch deck lock lag two on each side of the post for a total of four these timbers are fitted in the air one end at a time uh, they're very heavy and not e easy to manage in the air but it's the only way to uh, set the post the rafter ends against the house is just above the 10 foot wall so we have to put two by eight blocking uh, installed between the trusses and on the gable end the rafters are screwed in from the inside of the house to the back side of the rafters through these blockings to secure them we have installed 73 rafters on this house full length rafters they're uh, they're 11 foot six we have installed 73 rafters four hips and 32 hip rafters on this house for the porch 39 cedar posts 32 split perimeter beams make this porch framing all rough sawn you can see that the two by eight blocking between the truss ends uh, as we set the blocking we set the block we set the rafters also as we go that way we don't have to set our scaffold uh, back up on the project the entire porch roof has now been decked and now the tar paper is on the tyvek and the windows are going in as we go along on rainy days we go back and work on the windows and tyvek also the 1 by 12 vertical boards are going on 3 inch batten siding is being installed also siding is complete on the first floor and the cables and the end rake trim is done finally getting closed in for the season the porch is complete and we need the stairs one thing I forgot to say about the porch roof is that there's six rows of one by four 24 inches apart to screw the roofing into without seeing the screws from down below the stairs construction will be made up of one cedar log 18 inch at the butt and we use six steps four and a half inches thick the steps are six foot long and they are glued and screwed together as we put them in the top of the stringers are screwed through the back of the rim joists which are doubled up the bottom of the stair stringers is sitting on a concrete pad so it can float if necessary as needed finished stairs are in and we're going to leave the bark on them and we're going to let that bark dry and it'll eventually it'll fall off and leave a nice color or a pattern uh, wormholes and just look really natural the porch posts and beams are installed the roof has been installed the exterior stairs in i thank you for watching this set of set of pictures on this house in East Alabama. I hope you join me for the next set.